I'm Andre Rosedale, Aspen University, EDD 830 Leadership Theories. Dr. Donald J. Dunn is the instructor for this course, and this assignment is due August 16, 2021. In Module 4 of this class, we studied contingency leadership theories and models. These theories and models include Fiedler's Contingency Theory, the Continuum Theory, the Path Goal Theory, and Leadership Substitutes. Through the readings, research, the provided videos, and discussion posts, I learned specific aspects about applied leadership in a more formal setting. I can relate these formal aspects to the applications of these leadership models I have experienced as a subordinate and as a leader in my professional career. First, what is a theory and what is a model? The leadership theory is an explanation of some form of leadership that is used to better understand and control successful management. A leadership model is a practical application of a leadership theory. Fiedler's contingency model stated the best style of leadership is determined by the situation the leader is working in. Fiedler classified a leader's style as either task motivated or relationship motivated. In the contingency model, leadership style is fixed and cannot change, rather the context of the task should change. It is the organizations who should match leaders with proper situations. Fiedler developed a least preferred coworker scale, or LPC. This scale measures the degree to which a leader describes how favorably or unfavorably his LPC could work the least well. The idea behind the LPC scale is if you have a positive attitude towards people difficult to work with, you are relationship oriented. You are probably task oriented if you have negative attitudes towards people you find difficult to work with. Criticisms behind Fiedler's contingency leadership theory include lack of statistical results and the theory that the leadership style should not be changed, but rather the context of the job should change. Fielder is credited for his contributions to other leadership theories. The Continuum Leadership Model identifies seven styles of leadership that are based on boss-centered versus employee-centered leadership. Three variables are considered in the selection of the specific leadership style. The first variable is that of the leader. What is the leader's style based on her experience and her confidence in the ability of her followers? The second variable asks, what is the follower's preferred style of leadership to follow? The third variable is labeled the situation. The situation includes the organization's size, the structure of the organization, the goals of the organization, and the technology or tools available to complete the task. Another important consideration in the continuum model is time. The more time that is available to complete the task allows for, more, for a more participative style of management. The continuum leadership theory has not undergone much testing and the three leadership variables are very subjective. Path goal leadership states it is the leader's responsibility to increase the motivation of the followers to reach organizational and personal goals. The path goal model contains the elements of the leadership style, the followers and situation, and rewards that are geared towards meeting the followers' needs. The leader increases motivation by clarifying the path the follower takes to the available rewards or by increasing the rewards that the follower values. The leader needs to determine which type of rewards the follower values the most rewards from the work itself, or rewards such as promotion and bonuses. These leadership styles range from directive, where the followers want formal, authoritative leadership, supportive, where the followers do not want formal leadership and have a high ability to complete the project, participative, where the employee input is used in decision making, and finally achievement oriented, where high goals are set, followers perform at their highest abilities to achieve these goals and are rewarded for doing so. The path goal theory has two situational elements, the personal characteristic of the followers and the environment of the work setting. Criticisms, criticisms of the path goal theory include how a complex the aspects of leadership this theory tries to incorporate, 
This theory does not explain how leadership behavior correlates with motivating followers, and this theory is only directed towards followers, which does not allow followers to make changes on its leadership. Stephen Kerr and John Jemer presented the argument, certain situational variables prevent leadership from having influence on their employees' behaviors, attitude, or work product. Lucier and Achua state on page 131 of the textbook, substitutes for leadership should include characteristics of the subordinate task and organization that replace the need for a leader or neutralize the leader's behaviors. This has led to some companies to develop teams that manage themselves. Substitutes for leadership may occur when the workers are highly experienced or possess a high level of skill in their work area, or when managers are not in the proximity of their employees. Through the COVID response, we saw many parts of the workforce worldwide go remote. You may have gone remote yourself. Remote workers became a great testing ground for the substitute for leadership model. There are three variables of the substitute leadership model. These var variables include characteristics of the followers, characteristics of the task, and characteristics of the organization. As I mentioned, the COVID pandemic response was a great testing ground for this model. But not all employees, all tasks, or all organizations are suited for this model. For example, during the COVID pandemic, I saw the Connecticut State Police and the Connecticut Municipal Police Academies go remote. Most academy trainees are new to the profession, need structure, and need to be supervised. On-site work, even classroom work, should be in person. This was proven quickly as trainees were seen in their remote classrooms, lying in bed, in their pajamas, or playing online video games when they were supposed to be attending their remote classrooms in uniform in a proper work area. Several municipal police agencies, including my own, recalled their trainees from home and had them attend remote classes at their individual police departments. My leadership style has always been participative when available. I have always liked being part of the decision-making process in my place of work. I have always tried to involve my followers in as much of the decision-making of our work as possible when time permits. I think this style of leadership builds a rapport between team members and between leaders and followers. Therefore, I believe the leadership continuum model will work best at my law enforcement agency. For reasons of anonymity, we will label my police agency the Rose City Police Department, or RCPD. The continuum leadership model works best for the RCPD for several reasons that are based on the continuum leadership model's three var variables boss, subordinates, and situation, including time. The boss variable is ideal for the continuum leadership model being used at the RCPD for several reasons. Supervisors and policing are brought up through the ranks, from candidate to officer to supervisor. The skill development of a supervisor first comes from the skill development of an officer. The expectation of the job as a supervisor is known just as what one can expect from her subordinates is known. The subordinate variable of the continuum leadership model is equally matched to that of the boss variable. Subordinates who have worked with the supervisor for years as peers in the department are more willing to follow those that they have rapport with and are more willing to participate in tasks led by those leaders. The situational variable enables the continuum leadership model to be successful at the RCPD where technology, the environment, and goals all play an important part in the continuum leadership model, it is time that becomes the biggest asset in the continuum leadership model's success. In the textbook on page 118, Exhibit 4.5 is the Tannenbaum and Schmitz leadership model continuum. This model details leadership from the autocratic style to the participative style. Police officers are trained professionals who, when taking the job, Understand that they will work alone, with little supervision most of the time. This can include walking a beat, traffic enforcement, or investigating a reported crime. And then there are critical incidents when these same police officers must respond to emergency calls, work as a team, and follow instructions from a single leader. And when the planning 
and when planning the outcome of a motor vehicle enforcement campaign may allow the time for participative input for activities and goals, it is the same supervisors and followers who can understand that autocracy is necessary when time does not permit for mistakes to occur. I'm Andre Rosedale. Thank you for watching my video, and I appreciate and look forward to reading the comments that you will place in the discussion post below. Have a great day.